Hello, everybody. Welcome to the third of 10 Literally Dead Book Club live shows for 2023. Today, we're talking The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. Um, oh, everybody's prepared, Erin. <laughs> <laughs> Did um actually did anybody do the audio book or did you do the I I did it tandem. Oh nice. I did the audio. Okay. Cool. So we have everybody represented. I read this completely um physically and I'm interested to know if the audio book was good, but I guess we can ask that once we get into it. Um quick update on the book club. We are currently, well, I guess for the month of May, we're reading Whisper Down the Lane. And then the next month we're reading the devotion of suspect X. But today we'll be discussing the writing retreat. First, we should get into introduction. So um, I like to hear, what do I like to hear? Your name, probably. And um, like a recent favorite mystery thriller or horror or an all-time favorite mystery thriller or horror, just so people can get a feel for your reading taste. And then um, we'll finish with Angela, actually, and then she can get right into pitching us the book and telling us the synopsis. So go ahead. OK, hi, my name's Deja, and my channel is Deja's Book World. A recent horror favorite is actually surprising because I don't really read manga. I read manga for the first time last month, but it was Uzumaki by Junji Ito. It was phenomenal. It was so good. Um, and then for an actual like novel, I also read Slewfoot recently, and that one was also amazing. The pictures added so much to it, and it was just phenomenal. I also really enjoyed Slewfoot. Hello, my friends. My name is Erin. My channel is Booked and Busy. Um, I pulled a couple of my all-time favorite horrors, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, The House at the Bottom of the Lake by Josh Mallerman, Tender is the Flesh by Augustina of Astorica. Amazing. A fantastic taste. I love Tender is the Flesh. It's one of my favorites from last year. Um, hi, I'm Angela. Uh, I read a lot of speculative fiction, contemporary mystery thrillers, romances on my channel, Read the Sky. Um, and recently, I actually pulled it. One of my favorite mystery thrillers from this year is uh, What Lies oh. in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. It's like true crime meets magical, mystical vibes set in a small town. So really love this one. Interesting. I actually haven't heard very many good things about that. So the fact that you enjoyed it and we have some similar reading tastes that really intrigues me. I wasn't planning on picking that up. Hmm. It's it's I think it's very like divisive because you're either gonna love the way it's told or really dislike it. Okay. Right. Do you wanna tell us about the writing retreat? Give us your pitch. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> going right into it. The writing retreat follows a group of female writers who are invited to this writing retreat hosted by a reclusive feminist horror author, Rosa Kahlo. And the winner of the writing retreat gets the publishing deal of a lifetime. So they're all really motivated. Um, and we're mainly following Alex, who is at the retreat, suffering one of the worst cases of writer's block possible. And she has to um, constantly interact with her former friend, Ren, who she has really bad history with. So things are getting really intense as Rosa is getting more unpredictable, more manipulative, more erratic, and things really come to a head when uh, one of the writers disappears during a snowstorm. Thank you kindly. I love a good summary because I'm not good at them myself. So I appreciate <laughs> the willingness for somebody else to take that on. Um, okay, so uh, I don't know anybody's rating here. I feel like let's get into it. I'm actually going to post a little poll so the chat can do that and tell me what your rating was. Um, I would love to hear. We're in like the spoiler-free section because I, I put up the banner that was, you know, if you didn't read it. I don't know if that's you didn't read it, you didn't want to, or you didn't read it yet. So maybe there are some people here who are waiting to be convinced. And if we could each give our rating and um, like a one sentence spoiler free, just kind of explanation of why it got that rating from you. I think that might help the people who are kind of on the fence about it. Um, I feel like the chat is going to be split. Yeah, we've got every rating here, but I don't know about my fellow co-hosts. So here's the moment of truth. 
<laughs> what did you rate it and why? Okay, I'm giving it like 4.5 slash 5 stars. I really, really liked it. It was like so fun and ridiculous, but like in the best way possible. And it still made sense. Like it wasn't too outlandish. Love it. Angela? Oh, me? Okay. Um, I also gave it four stars. Mm -hmm. So kind of pretty high because I was really entertained throughout the whole thing. But the ending didn't do it for me. But like <laughs> over, overall, I thought it was a really fun time. So that's what I'm rating it for. Uh, I gave this one two stars. I thought it was unhinged in the absolute worst way. And that the main character was insufferably obsessed with her frenemy. Uh, and I will never read another Julia Barks. <laughs> God. That bad. Oh my god. This actually oh. confirmed that I'm not a thriller girl. So as oh a genre gosh. is written off. Well, I'm so glad that uh, my book club is the one to do that for you. <laughs> <Thank you're laughs> that, that I've turned you off from an entire oh genre. Gosh. This is my fourth time hosting. Every the all the first three I read horrors and I gave each of them five stars. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have to stick with the horror books from now on. All right. Um, I'm actually very glad to hear that we have a mix of ratings so everybody in the chat can feel represented. Uh, so when the moment comes to, you know, say something great about the book, there's people for that. If you want to shit talk the book, there's people for that. Uh, I gave it five stars. If you didn't watch my most recent blog, uh, I read it. I reviewed it briefly in it. I absolutely loved it. I don't care that it's stupid and that it makes no sense and <laughs> that it's completely unhinged. Like that is my... That's my taste. Um, I said before that if a book surprises me and entertains me, it's gonna get high ratings and this one did. Uh, and that's really all I care about. I don't think anybody is really here at this point after four years of this book club um, that I love highbrow, you know, mystery and thriller. Nope, I like the stupid shit and this was that. So that's my rating. Uh, I'm gonna check the poll really quick. The majority was four stars. Um, the next most common one was three stars. And then there's a pretty perfect split between people who gave it one or two stars and five stars. So we've really got everything. Um, now we're going to get into spoilers. So we're going to talk about everything. Um, okay, so the mystery doesn't really kick off until 170 pages in. Um, the girls get drugged at one point. Um, and one of them goes missing. That happens like more than halfway through the book. So my first three questions are about that first half of the book. I want to know what characters intrigued you. Um, I want to know how you were finding the pace and setup up until that point. And did you have any theories at that time? Just because I feel like what I've seen from a lot of people is that the first half of the book, they actually really loved and then it went off the rails and they didn't like it. So I'm interested to know up into that mystery, uh, how were you finding the book already? So what characters, should I run through the characters actually? Just so we yeah, can I have to make a it. character list. <laughs> okay, so we had Alex, the main character. She has her bestie, Ursula, who's a, a novelist. Uh, she has her other former bestie, Ren. She's this guy she's kind of dating, I don't know, friends with named Pete. Um, there's the retreat host, Rosa. She has her editors. Yana, Ian, and the chef, Chitra, and then the fellow participants of the writing retreat, um, Poppy, Taylor, Kira, and then Ren again. Um, and then we also have the people like within the novel that's within the book. So I don't, I can't get into all of them. I don't think I wrote them down. <laughs> okay. uh, so characters that intrigued you right off the bat, who were you interested in? Um, For me, I was honestly really interested in Kira. And that's like the one thing that I find disappointing is I feel like they could have done so much more with her character. She was just the one that I related to the most. So she was the one who intrigued me. But I also really liked Poppy because I feel like she was going to have a, a different edge to her. Like I knew there was something deeper there. Um, and obviously Rosa, I was really fascinated by Rosa. And I thought like all of the things that they were describing, like the books that she wrote, I was like, wait, but like, I want, I want to read that now. Like, where right. is that? <laughs> so those are the three that I found like the most interesting um, Alex was not entertaining to me at all, though. I do have to say that. Alex, she was just the vessel for the story. Um, so I also liked Poppy. Um, I think that from the beginning, there was like obviously something 
kind of fishy about her. So she was like the center of the mystery for a while for me. And then also Taylor, mainly because um, the way she was introduced was really awkward. Like she had a really awkward way of breaking the ice. So I was like, she's either going to be like the really lovable outspoken character or like an absolute psychopath. There was like no in between. So <laughs> yeah. Um, not, I'm gonna, not gonna lie, none of the characters really did anything for me very early on. I was like, yeah, this is not gonna be a good time. Admittedly, I was also having a bad time in real life. Uh, but I think Rosa was the most intriguing character throughout the story because she was mysterious and like we didn't know everything about her. Uh, and because we didn't actually spend that much time with her, she was like really built up quite a bit prior to getting to the house and, you know, just this she had a lot of myths surrounding her. Mm -hmm. uh, I think everybody's pretty much been in the chat interested in Rosa and her crew. Somebody said Taylor was their favorite. Someone said Taylor was the least memorable. Uh, Poppy vibe and Kira's presence. I feel like every, to me, this was like the perfect cast size. I, I originally thought there was going to be more characters at the writing retreat because I thought it was going to be like 20, 30 people. I don't know why. Um, so the fact that there was only a couple, I was surprised by, but I, I ended up really appreciating that size of cast. Uh, love the idea of Rosa. Alex was insufferable, didn't like Alex. I was fine being in Alex's head. I think the person who was most intriguing to me was Ursula, and I thought she was gonna become more of the story. Um, I can't say that I would have preferred that to be the plot because I think that's what I was expecting. I was expecting Ursula to have a hand in like something that was going on and wasn't just like the nice friend. Um, so I think she was kind of interesting to me because she was an author. She had a lot of success and I wanted to learn more about her. Um, Alex was very like neurotic and anxious and like being in her head like, made me itch. And I feel like a lot of main, like female main characters in thrillers have a, like, a similar personality. I would like someone to be like confident and just sure-footed going into the situation. And her, obs we'll get into, I think we'll get into the obsession later, but she was so obsessed with this woman <laughs> so up until that point how were you finding the pace because for me this was just like this was the perfect half first half of a book i kind of have ever read i know not everyone would agree but i i absolutely loved the setup were you guys liking it from the beginning those of you who liked it were you loving it right from the beginning and aaron did it turn for you or was it bad from the beginning <laughs> I really, really did love the first half. I honestly think I like that half better than the second half. Like the first half is definitely like five stars. I loved it. It was so fun, which I didn't expect because I don't really like like gothic horror, like haunted houses, like any of that. But I think the characters were just so interesting. And I really enjoyed like the characterization of the house itself. It really just had me hooked from the beginning. Uh, I don't know. It was just so fun. And like to learn all the characters, and they were all introduced in such like, interesting ways i was like okay what's what, what's this person about that's why i literally took notes on all the characters even the cab driver his name's joe in case mm -hmm. you're all curious <laughs> i thought joe was gonna have to do with something that, me too that's why i wrote him down i was like joe is definitely gonna have a part <laughs> yeah i agree um i thought like i really liked how we didn't waste time with setup and like you know by the second chapter we're already entering the retreat um i I think that I thought that we would spend a little more time exploring the house and how it would how it would play a bigger part in the actual mystery or in the story itself. Like we would describe the house and we would describe the eerie feelings in the house, but it was kind of just like, nope, the house is the house. Okay, we're moving on. So I think that was probably the only thing that wasn't expected, but otherwise, like A plus pacing. Um, I like the house as well. I like a haunted house story. I like a creepy house where like the setting is a character in the story. The atmosphere does a lot for me. And so that was probably one of the more enjoyable parts when they were getting like the lore of the property and the, the tragedies that happened before and then like exploring it. I like that. But from the beginning, because Alex was very like neurotic and whatever, I was like, yeah, this is not working for me. Um, but otherwise, <laughs> Sure, it was fine. <laughs> I, I I agree that the setup was smart for me. Uh, that's what I kept thinking every, I didn't even care that we didn't get a mystery yet. Like I didn't care who was gonna go missing or who was gonna die. I was just so interested in getting to know everybody. 
And I feel like everything was introduced so organically. Like a lot of times things will be spelled out. It'll be like the house was isolated. You know, the closest city was this far away. The characters, you know how, but instead it was like they drove past a nunnery and somebody said, oh, the nunnery is 15, it's 15 more miles until the manor. And you just knew like that gave you the isolation vibes rather than I feel like spelling it all out. It was more in the dialogue. And then also that scene of like Rosa, um, she was at that book thing and that guy, she like called him out in the middle of it um, for stealing a story. And I just felt like that really set up Rosa's unhinged nature right from the start. And I knew that it was only going to build and it was just leaving all of these breadcrumbs. So for later, you had all of these things to reference like, oh, she has done this before and everything was set up really well. I also like, I love getting introduced to the characters the way that we did, because if you are somebody who struggles with getting to know people, the way that it was like, oh, okay, um, this person's in the blue room, this person's in the red room, and then each of them got a necklace. So you could associate each girl with the animal they were given. So it was easy to, for me, it was super easy to distinguish them right off the bat. And I appreciated all of the setup and all of the writing. And then we got like the competition vibes and it felt like there was this countdown that the girls had to meet every day at a certain time. And it was just all set up really well. I wanted to stop reading it because I was worried it was gonna go in a direction I didn't like. And I just loved the first half so much that I knew it was like, I just had the feelings it was gonna be one of my favorite all time books. And I was worried that it wasn't gonna be. Um, so the other question was, I wanna know if you had any theories. Since there was no mystery presented, where did you think the story was going? I guess you do know in the synopsis that there's somebody's going to go missing. But like, what theories did you have? What were you considering in the first half? What direction did you think it was going to go? I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of a no thoughts, head empty reader. I'm just there for the raw and I'm there for the roller coaster. Um, normally, like, I'm not like a what's going on, like, mm -hmm. but when I get disappointed, it's like, oh, like when, when the twists fall flat, but that did not really happen in this book, thank God. But I'm not really like theorizing about all these different things. I'm just like, okay, like what, what's next? What, what's going on? I feel like I'm the same, except I think I've read a few books with like a similar setup to this book. So I was like basing my theories off of the past books that I read. But for this one, I think besides Rosa just being like, completely unhinged and orchestrating their there's like this big plan to like kill them off one by one i also thought that maybe alex was the one who mm -hmm. was unhinged because like there were moments especially when um they were like being imprisoned in the basement and like um they were trying to escape and then zoe died and alex just stood by and didn't do anything i was like that's suspicious <laughs> so like you were suspicious of her throughout the whole book because she was like for how bland she was she was also kind of sharp about some of the theories mm -hmm. of like her analysis of certain people in the group so i was like there's something fishy about her like i wonder if she separate from rosa is like trying to pick off all the writers one by one so she gets the final Same. deal i am just a float just story type of gal I don't really theorize. I'm just like, oh, okay. This is what's going on. This is what's happening. Okay. Uh, we have theories in the chat. But Ren, yeah, it's like who was going to go missing? I had no idea who was going to go missing. I actually forgot someone was going missing. I thought it was somebody got murdered. So I was surprised when someone went missing. Um, thought an actual demon would show up. Yes, ma'am. Are we going to, at any point, talk about the carnal nature of this book? I guess my burning question. Because <laughs> it caught me Seriously? unaware. Oh I will I will actually have a question in just a second about the most surprising thing. So maybe that... <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's yours. <laughs> a lot of people thought it would be an actual haunting, uh, full-blown ghost story. I can't say that that's, what, that's the direction I thought it would go in, because that's just not what the marketing was. And I didn't hear, hear anybody talk about it um, in that way. So I didn't think that. I uh, thought Chitra was going to be more a part of it. Thought the history of the house was going to have a bigger impact. Sure. No theories, just vibes. I uh, thought Alex was an unreliable narrator. Sure. Oh, we thought Rosa was going to be a real witch. Well, a lot of people were thinking um, 
supernatural stuff. I too am glad it wasn't a haunted, like yeah. a real haunted ghost story. I feel like if it was like supernatural, it would have been more marketed as a horror than a thriller. So I never really thought that. Although sometimes there is like that twist. We have there had is. book club picks before that have gone off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> this is this That's is my number one theory was that Rosa was going to I thought she was gonna steal the I think I thought she was gonna steal all the stories or steal the best by the end. Like that's what I was thinking the entire time, um, which is pretty much what it was. Uh, my other theory was that all of the women who got invited had done something bad and this was their punishment because we knew that Alex cool. pushed Ren down the stairs. And I thought that maybe Rosa had brought them all there to get their confessions and was gonna punish them. Oh wow. Well, I guess you did. <laughs> I guess that kind of is what happened. There's a lot more theories. I'm so sorry I can't uh, mention every single one. Okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> those took me by surprise. Like they it did. was, it was a lot. It it was never so ending. All right. I guess I don't have a question, but like, d did that did that improve the book for you? Did it ruin the book for you? Um, what did you feel like the purpose of it was? I don't even know. They were just kind of there. I don't think it ruined it, but also I was like, oh, okay, like, so this is what we're doing. I just thought maybe it'd be like one or twice, but then it was like the whole time. Um, and I was like, okay, well, that's something that Julia chose to do. I mean, I, I was trying to like find where it would tie into like the themes i was like oh maybe it's like commentary on like female friendships but then after like the third time where like it was like her her dream where she was like getting pushed down the stairs by ren i was like i think julia just has some unresolved unresolved issues that she's just working out through her book like it's it's just a lot like yeah it made me so uncomfortable i wanted to throw i was like <laughs> The, and I, I think I text my friends like the surprise sapphic nature. I could have, I could have done without it because it was weird every single time that it came up. Like her stand, like her, because okay, how old did you imagine Rosa? Because I was thinking Rosa was like a grand dame, like sixty. Oh, yeah, like 50s, 60s. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they said her age in the book. So when she was standing outside Rosa's door, listening to her masturbate or whatever, you know, I wanted to die because I'm like, I why she looked good for her grandma? age? get it on disgusting you're weird <laughs> i think that i think my favorite thing is i've heard from people um because this is a book of the month pick and so i guess there's like a whole facebook group where people oh, yeah. discuss the books and there's a bunch of like conservative moms on there who are so upset that there was like lesbian <laughs> sex in the book and i just think that's so funny i love that really <laughs> yeah. imagine just picking up and being like <laughs> Yeah. I feel like I feel like Julie was trying to connect this to Rosa because I feel like Rosa is a very like unhinged carnal person. I feel like she would write like in her books like hella sex scenes. So I feel like maybe that's what was trying to go going on. That's what I was thinking. It's like okay, maybe this is Rosa. The the, the LSD sex trip where she oh, was and the her, LSD was crazy. The the girl imagining her like okay, if you want to. If you want to finish, tell me I'm going to win the competition. You're going to back out and I'm going to push you over the stairs. Oh, my eyes. I, I thought the there. LSD trip, the LSD trip sex scene was like probably the only one that kind of made sense to me, like plot wise. Like the, the stairs one, though, that one was ridiculous. Just too much. They were definitely shocking and I loved it. It was just great. Because it, it wasn't, it's not like it was in a romance book and it was supposed to make you feel like these characters have such a connection and like it's beautiful. Like it was supposed to make you feel weird and it did. I think it, I think it pulled up exactly what it meant to. <laughs> I too was stressed during the LSD scene. Um, I guess my question, my question, my question, what was the most surprising element for you? Um, mine really was when she was like, you drugged us. And I was like, she drugged you? I could not believe it. <laughs> Um, I think mine was either the drugging because I really did not expect that. But that's like the point that I really knew that Rosa was like unhinged on a different level. But it still surprised me when we found out from Poppy that basically Rosa has been murdering people and taking their stories because I just wasn't thinking about it. Like it was once they said it, I was like, 
it was like all the all the all of it clicked into my head do you know that meme where it's like the lady looking at all the math that's how it felt it was all just clicking in my head i was like it was right in my face but i didn't see it and it shocked me but i loved it i think the most shocking scene i don't know there there was a few like definitely the taylor reveal shocking because i thought that it was going to be between kira or taylor that i was like there's there's something going on between them because like kira was like taking leadership and then taylor was kind of like behind the scenes sabotaging so taylor was definitely a surprise um i think that was probably the major thing mm -hmm. the carnal nature took me by surprise <laughs> But then there's this one moment where I'm like, Alex is so unhinged and obsessed with this woman, it's unhealthy. They were at the dinner table and she was showing off her diamond ring. And she literally said, she's engaged. She hasn't put that on her social media. And I was like, what's the <laughs> wrong with you? Oh yeah, and it was the fact too that she like was multiple, like admitted multiple times throughout the beginning that she was stalking her. I was like, was so you just- a burner account? Like, I man, mean, you are actually in the world. I understand. I understand where she's coming from first. But still, I was like, okay, so we're just saying that in the open. I'm glad to hear you couldn't relate, Erin. Truly. But it's real. I like, it's this people burn her account to look at you. I was using a Bookstagram account because nobody knows about that. But it's just like, it was very weird that she was. <laughs> also, the fact that it only happened a year ago was very odd to me. Mm. I, I think the most surprising to me might have been actually when, because um, I thought the necklaces were going to mean something more than they did. Like I thought they were going to reference what the characters were going to experience or like, I don't know, like something. Um, but it turned out that like there was a microphone in one of them because Taylor was getting, like her, the feed of hers was going to Rosa and the team and whoever to find out what the girls were talking about. I did not see that coming. I didn't I didn't expect what the necklaces were really gonna mean and I thought that was fun. I think everyone's saying like the um the dungeon, like the fact that the most surprising thing is that these people are being held captive. It's like a Narnia moment. They have to go through the closet. Yeah, I think <laughs> Um, when they so, brought the computer cords down, I said, now y'all are on another level. <laughs> he said, I'm going to keep y'all in captivity, but the pages are still do. Okay, so what did you think about the direction that it took? Like the fact that the women were being held captive and um, that when Poppy went missing, she was really like kidnapped and still in the house. Did you enjoy the direction that it took? I did because I was just really glad it did not go in a paranormal direction. I just really did not want that at all. So the fact that it wasn't that, I was like, okay, yes. Like, I liked it. It didn't blow my mind. Some of the twists blew my mind. But the direction, I was like, oh, like, we're unhinged. I like it. But it, it wasn't like, oh, my God. Like, this is the best thing I've ever read for the second half, the first half thing. I think I was like intrigued by the direction, but I was kind of disappointed with how quickly Rosa slash team lost control of the situation. Mm -hmm. Like it seemed like it was very like haphazardly put together. They did not think through like, oh, what if one of the people we let in gets a little bit too smart and like finds their way out or like whatever. Like it just felt very like, I don't know, half-assed. That's probably the best word to describe it. I did tab one thing and I said, like, how are you going to imprison them all in the same room? Like, how was that your plan? How did you think that they weren't all going to, like, work together and figure something out? How did you not have multiple jail cells prepared or whatever? And, like, that first scene where they were like, yeah, just, like, just come out one by one and don't move because we're trusting you not to move. <laughs> like, so. Yeah. Only thing I that I expected to happen that didn't happen is I, I thought that Rosa would like seduce Alex and that they would bang. Since everybody else was banging and it was gross anyway. Like getting it on with your grandma while I edit your book. I think yes. I need to recommend this one to um Brie from the Lock Book Kitchen, because that's definitely her vibe. <laughs> Horny grandma stories. They had some serious chemistry in their one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings. Um, I guess kind of already answered this. A lot of people are saying that they did think it was going to be supernatural. 
I really, I don't know, the, I, I go back and forth between liking stories within stories. So like this one, I liked that it didn't take over the whole book, like the story that she was writing about Daphne, Daphne and Lamia and Horace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the spirit that like took over whatever was happening there. Um, I didn't care a lot about that story. I'm glad it was there, but it's not super memorable to me. I do think it would be interesting. Like maybe Julia Bartz is planning on like publishing that as a standalone story. Um, I do think, I do think, what was I gonna say? <laughs> um, I think that book inside the book needed to be a little bit better for Rosa to be so obsessed with it and like needing that ending. Cause that was like the only reason she was gonna keep her alive was like, she has to write the ending of this book. Cause the whole thing is that Rosa didn't write any of the books herself. Like that's the big reveal. She stole all of them. Um, well, the so one that she wrote was the one that sucked. Right. <laughs> So she had no chance anymore. Um, so the fact that she just like needed the end of the story so badly seemed a little weird because the story wasn't that good in my opinion that you'd be that desperate for an ending. Um, but I'm interested to know if you loved, if any, if, did you guys like the story within the story? Um. Yeah, it was, I liked it. But again, it didn't like blow my mind. Like I wasn't obsessed with the story within the story. I liked how it did add like a paranormal element without the story being paranormal. I did like that. I um, appreciated the reprieve from the foolishness. <laughs> like every couple of pages, something dumb happens. You're like, ah, oh, finally something, something expected, something normal. <laughs> Just a demon in, in your house. That's totally normal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I think the story was it reflected reality a bit too much for my taste, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's my not, I've seen a few people say they like that it reflected reality, but I thought it kind of gave away the story a little bit. Oh, wow, I thought people were gonna love the story from the story. So I'm glad I'm not the only one. I like the one little reveal where the girl was stealing the story that was in an arc that she had. Just as a book person, that just was a, a nice little moment. That's really the biggest reveal is that, um, what character was that? Was that Poppy was actually Zoe um, and she had stolen stolen an arc and was rewriting it to get into the writing retreat. That's definitely, that's pretty fun. I mean, sure it's the first draft, but like they were literally killing over it. <laughs> yeah, like it was a, apparently just the greatest book. Um, okay, how did you feel about the ending? So I wrote down the series of events that happened because they happened really fast. So Alex's escape is like, she, well, she originally uses like wolf's bane and she like puts it in everybody's drinks. I thought that's like, here's where it got just like camp and felt like um, Pretty Little Liars, the dollhouse season where it was just all just so silly. Um, but I was still loving it when she she was like about to be murdered or whatever. And she was like, wait, can I have one last request to, to, to like drink, have a drink together? I was like, is she's not going to fall for that. She fell for that. Um, and she was like going to poison them all. And then we find out um, that Kira is back and not dead after all. That was a pretty big surprise, I guess. Um, add to the list. This is one of those books that like sometimes I pick book club things and there's only like one mystery and there's only one reveal. And it's, it's like people are like, I saw that coming. This was predictable. You can't say this book was predictable because there's like 10 reveals. Like you can't see everything coming. So Kira comes back. She kind of saves the day. Um, they end up destroying the manuscripts at the end. Like that's the big thing that Rose is getting them to do is she's like, write the ending and then you're going to throw them in the fire. Um, and then we get a six months later moment where uh, Alex has written her book and is successful and Rosa reaches back out to her to congratulate her on the book and Kira's alive and Ren's alive and at the end of the day though this felt like such a death heavy book in my mind only like three people died by the end so a lot of people survived how do you feel about it all how do you feel about Alex's life afterwards and getting that little epilogue that everything's kind of fine I liked it but again it wasn't like mind-blowing i did really like how rosa texted her from abroad it was just like 
yeah, like, I know what's going on. I read your book. I, I did like that because it just shows that Rosa is still crazy. She's just un unhinged on a different level. Like, who does that? Like, girl, like, you're supposed to be gone. And then it's the fact that she was like, oh, yeah, you could show this to the police because uh, the phone's already going to be gone. Like, or she's not okay. I think she really needs a therapist heavily. She was very confident. Vi uh, I think she narcissistic personality disorder, really. Something was going on there. But I I like the Wolfsbane element because of the um, tie back to Rosa. I thought that was really fun. How I was like, oh my gosh, like, I love that little connection. But yeah, it was really, I liked it, even though everything was just kind of fine at the end. Because I don't really like it sometimes when my main characters die. I get a little sad. I really would have cared with Alex, but I feel like it made sense how it played out. <laughs> um, I was not a big fan of the ending. Um, I thought that there was like a lot of like, because there were so many reveals, there was a lot of like false starts. And I was really waiting mm -hmm. for that like big finale impact and then she was just kind of like all right skedaddle i'm, I'm out of here like bye and then actually i would have really liked um kind of like a really big like you know alex soul survivor walking away from like a burning house totally. kind of situation but you know it's cool <laughs> uh i don't think enough people died in the end Mm. And I predict that Alex is going to be the new Rosa because she only had this one good trauma book in her. Oh, and she was, I feel like it was alluded to that she was struggling with her writing like post that. She didn't really know what she was going to do next. So, you know, so she's in love with Rosa anyway. Also, there was this one moment where Rosa was like, you know, I was meant to curate books or whatever. She's like, you know, that's an editor, right? That was so funny. <laughs> you could just edit. And so also, funny. how much author money? I understand that there are some authors that are like super rich, but enough to have like a secret, another identity, bank accounts in the Cayman Islands, or to be able to disappear without a name. I was like, I don't know if I'm buying it, Granny. <laughs> <laughs> there was no logic. Here's the one. The one moment that got me is I I actually tabbed something that said like you're really insulting my intelligence here when <laughs> she when Alex escaped the house and then came back to save Ren, like decided she was gonna go back into the house. And then Rosa is like, you should kill Ren or whatever happened. And Alex starts considering if she should kill Ren. I was like, there's no way. You're actually like, we got a one page inner monologue of her being like, let's weigh the pros and cons of killing Ren. And I'm like, you're not actually thinking about this. You came all the way back here. Like that was a little much for me. <laughs> Wish Poppy had lived, okay. Um, Alex should have pushed Rosa over the railing. <laughs> Maybe we could have thought she died and then the epilogue, well, I don't know. I, I think that um, maybe Julia Bartz like really wanted to kind of redeem Alex, like make her good in the end so she couldn't kill Rosa. But why would you do that unless you really wanted to like write another book with Alex in it? You know, like there was no reason to not make Alex take everyone down. Okay, everyone on Rosa dead. <laughs> Okay, she's gonna, gonna be the new Taylor. Uh, Rosa's her sugar mommy. I don't think Rosa has money for that anymore. Well, she had all those secret bank accounts. She's good. She got a new false identity. I feel like getting a false identity costs a lot of money. So I don't know. Maybe I'll team up for the next one. Oh gosh, they're clearly unhinged. Yeah, right. Like the police are definitely gonna find her. Like how you can't really disappear like that. Um, would you read from this author again? Yes, but not a sequel. Yeah, no. What not would you, could you imagine what she would write after this? Like, no. could you imagine a story you'd want her to tell? Um, I don't know. I would definitely read from her again, though, but I hope to God she does not do a sequel. I didn't even think about that until you brought it up, but I will not be reading that if it comes out. Even if she writes a full thing about the story within a story, I will also not be reading that. I don't want that. I want the story to be just this... <laughs> Agree. Yeah, I feel like a maybe like a different genre would be um, an interesting. Like if she did like dark literary fiction without the thriller elements, maybe it'd be a little bit less ridiculous <laughs> in some of the parts, but still fun, you know. I wouldn't read from this author again or her sister. I just feel like they might write too similarly. Or her mom, or her dog. 
Well, I know how she anyway. struggled with thrillers too. Andrea Barks. I um, did not realize that they were related. But I've also sworn off the genre. Right, of so, course. You're never going to pick one up again. I definitely believe you. I own some, and I'm going to read those, but that's it. <laughs> I do think, like, maybe she could write horror. Maybe, like, dipping her toe into the story within the story was her seeing if she could write horror. I don't think it was the most successful, but I think she, she could. I know some people DNF this because they thought it was too scary. So, for some people, it happened. <laughs> okay. I guess if you're expecting just a domestic thriller, you know, the moments where she's in the basement and the candle's blown out, like there are some spooky elements. Um, I think maybe more people DNF it because of the sex scenes. I think it's a valid concern. <laughs> you need to know. Now we need to put I've a content warning book. on the book. Yes, no one has ever mentioned that it's very carnal. And I think that's an important element. It is. Okay, well, whether you liked it or not, what other books would you recommend that people read, whether they liked it or not? Maybe there's something better out there. Maybe there's something similar you've read. What do you think? Um, I think the most obvious one is Home Before Dark. I feel like there's a lot of parallels between the books. I, I feel like there's so much that parallels, but you can't even talk about it because it'll spoil Home Before Dark. Mm -hmm. But it does also have like the book within a book element. So I feel like it it parallels a lot and then also this is kind of a weird one but i think the perfect marriage because i think this book is unhinged and has so many plot twists and the perfect marriage does the same thing it's so ridiculous i feel like the writing in this book is definitely better than the perfect marriage but i think if you just like tea and plot twists and kind of unhinged mess that doesn't completely make sense i think the perfect marriage could be pretty good honestly all right i'll jot it down Oh, and then I was going to say the movie Fresh. I thought about the movie Fresh. I feel like it kind of, like, I feel like I can't even say because it, it doesn't spoil the movie. But I feel like <laughs> Fresh and this book kind of have some, like, parallels towards, like, the second half of the book. They have some things kind of in common. Not completely, but also I feel like the carnal nature also parallels as well, for sure. Okay. Ava, I thought the exact same thing. If you like the unhinged ridiculousness, and a main character who do, does too much for her own good, lock every door. What did you rate that one? One star. Perfect. Actually, I gave it. I gave it. I gave it five. So I would recommend it. Um, I think uh, one book that comes to mind is "Who Is Maud Dixon" by Alexander. Alexandra Andrews. It's more literary fiction, but it has that same like writer, mentor, mentee, um, a little bit like iffy relationship, a little bit obsessive relationship. Um, a lot of wild things happen. Um, and then for like kind of like a darker take on like the whole unhinged artist trope, um, Night Film by Marisha Pessel oh, sure. is kind of like the same unhinged artists like except it's a filmmaker so it's an unhinged filmmaker making horror movies um but it's the same kind of like dark gritty vibe darker than this book but um yeah same kind of tropes see yeah, Aaron yeah. knocking these all off for tv <laughs> 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 absolutely not. nope not that one <laughs> so, i also um, think i have one more um daisy darker because this is the only other closed room mystery that i like like locked door mystery i don't like them at all but i like this one i just read it recently and also i feel like kind of like some of like the elements that i can't really say overlap in this book too um in ways but i i really like this one i said i would never do another alice beanie but i like daisy much. darker so much i give it 4.5 stars and i just read it this month that's not my right. tbr and now i'm questioning it I think it's not unhinged or carnal like this book. It's just, it has a lot of family tea and some of like the elements overlap, but it's not unhinged. Maybe a little, but not a lot. Uh, Death of Jane Lawrence is an interesting one. Uh, House of Hunger, I didn't even think about, but totally, like, especially when you think about, you know, like the nice kind of ending at the end um, and, you know, the sapphic nature of it. Uh, one by one by Greek Rare, just like a group of people. Oh, totally. um, House Across like the Lake, I agree. Sorry, what'd you say? 
I said I liked one by one, and I seemed to be in like the minority with that one. That's true. I liked it too. It was a mystery. I, I like mystery apparently and horror. Hmm. I'm excited to read the last word. I can't. That's the one where it's like a bad reviewer is being stalked by the author. I have that on my TV. I'm reading it like next week. I can't wait to read it. I always like to come back to these comments for some recommendations. Um, misery, totally. Oh, Great yeah. One. That's about an author who is being held captive as well. Um, I would say like something that came to mind just as one of my favorite ghost stories, like if you were reading this and you wanted it to turn into more paranormal, I think when the reckoning comes, I find any excuse to recommend. This is by Latanya McQueen. It's one of my favorite. I feel like it's a little underrated. Uh, it's a really good, it's a really good ghost story, and it's actually like scary horror in my opinion. Jennifer's body, fantastic recommendation. It is. I've never seen that. Don't do it. <laughs> I don't know if it'll be for you. Okay, um, that's, I guess, the end of the live show. I think we covered everything for the writing retreat. I'm going to come back and look at more of those recommendations because that's my favorite thing. And then I'm probably going to make a video where I read some of these recommendations because I obviously loved this one. This was my first book club five star of the year, which is very exciting. And hopefully that continues with these ones to come. Um, I posted on the Literally Dead Book Club Instagram that we were reading Whisper Down the Lane and the author commented. And I can't remember what he said. We went, oh, boy. Or something like that. I was like, what does that mean? Like, are you worried for us? Are you okay? So wish us luck with this down the lane and I'll announce that uh, live show and everything soon. So thank you to my co-host for being here and we will see you next time. <laughs>